Hi everyone, this is Mindy for Pretty Pink Posh, and in today's video, I'm going to teach you how to put together the scallop box card and also how to decorate it. So here is a look at the scallop box card die. It is very simple to put together and it's going to kind of pop up into a great display card. Now I'm also going to be using the flower garden stamp set and the spring chicks. The first thing I'm going to do is die cut out this large piece, which is our base. And I'm also going to die cut out this kind of straight rectangle piece from white cardstock. Now you're really going to want about two to three of those smaller straight rectangle pieces, depending how many uh, pieces you want to put inside of your box. Now there's also these scalloped edge pieces. These are what you can use to decorate your box card. You can die cut these from colored cardstock or pattern paper. I'm just going to do some simple ink blending today. Here's a look at all of those pieces die cut out and I am going to just separate it out and work with these rectangles. Now these are the pieces that's going to go in the front of the box and also in the inside of the box. And because of the scene I'm going to create, I'm going to add some ink blending with key lime ink to represent my grass. I'm going to have this really cute flower garden scene and I don't need to have the ink blending go all the way down to the bottom since you're most likely not going to see that. Now I'm also going to add a little bit of this green to the scallop part. Now this is where my sentiment is going to go and it's also going to be shown on the front of the box. So I wanted it to match the other pieces. Now for the scalloped piece, this is going to be my sky and I'm ink blending on a light blue. So this is sea glass ink from Gina K Designs, just kind of quickly going over that. Now that I have my main pieces kind of ink blended and die cut out, I'm going to stamp and color some images. So here I placed down a bunch of images off of the flower garden stamp set. I really, really loved that wheelbarrow. So I'm going to ink these up in a black ink that's going to be alcohol friendly because I am going to color them with my Olo markers. I had also gone ahead and stamped out these clouds and those little tufts of grass and those came from the Spring Chicks stamp set. So for the clouds, I just did an outline of a really light blue and I'm also going to use that for the flowers. The Copic coloring that I'm doing, I'm sorry, the alcohol ink coloring that I'm doing today, so used to using my Copics, but the alcohol ink coloring I'm doing today is very simple. For the most part, I'm going to only use a two color combination. I will lay down my lightest color and then come in and just slightly add a shadow with a darker color. I especially like to do this when I have very small areas because I really don't need to blend anything out. I just need to add a shadow area to kind of give it a little bit of dimension and contrast. Now I did bring in kind of more of a lime green for the handle of my shovel for a couple of the leaves and then also my watering can. And then for this, I'm still only going to use two colors. This one I'm kind of feathering that darker color out and I will blend that a little bit with that lighter color, mainly because that is such a big open area. Then I have these smaller flowers. Once again, I am just laying down my lightest color here and then I'll come in with a little bit of a darker color and just trace around some of those lines of the flower just to once again, give it that contrast. I'm really going to try and keep my color palette very simple. I wanted to have a very spring and light and airy vibe to it. And I'm going to try and use these colors throughout my card. So for instance, the pink that I used for the flowers, I'm going to color my boots here a similar color just to kind of give it that light airy feel. This one, once again, I added that shadow area and then had to come back in and blend that out because it is a little bit larger of an area. I added a light yellow to the center of some of those flowers. I'm going to make one of those other flowers kind of more of a purple color. I have some light gray for the shovel. And then for the tire on my wheelbarrow, that one's also going to be kind of a light gray, just a little bit darker than what I used on the shovel. I didn't want anything to be super dark and kind of stick out like a th sore thumb. I wanted it to be fairly light. Now the wheelbarrow itself, I can't say that word very well, that one I am going to have multiple colors in because there is so much of an area to color this. So I went through, I added a dark color to the right hand side. I traced underneath the line that is from the stamp on the wheelbarrow. And then I also added that dark color under the flowers because the flowers are overhanging 
the top of my wheelbarrow. So that's going to cast a shadow. Then I can come in and blend that out. Now this one I do have a three color combination for just to make sure I'm really getting that contrast to it and showing some definition to it. I had gotten a little heavy handed down at the bottom and I'm taking the zero marker from Olo and I'm pushing that color kind of back into my line. Then I added a dark gray to my bottom of my boots and I'm taking that zero marker once again and just adding dots because it's going to kind of lift up that ink and give it more of a polka dot look. Then I used the coordinating dies over the images and ran these through my die cut machine. Before I start adhering anything together, I want to get my sentiment stamped on this piece. So this is that scalloped piece that's going to go on the front of the box. I picked out a spring greetings sentiment. This is off of the flower garden stamp set and I'm stamping that in the black Versafine ink. Now I'm going to set that off on the side to dry because that does stay wet for a little longer and I'm going to work on my card. So on our main base piece, which is that larger piece, there are some lines that the die cut into it and I'm just going to fold along those lines. Now this is the scalloped piece that I had ink blended with the light blue ink. I'm going to add that right to the back of my card using my tape runner. So I'm just going to kind of open those flaps back up and line this up so I have even white margins going around my scalloped piece. There were a few clouds that I had stamped and colored in and I'm going to attach those right away because I knew they were going to hang off the edge of my card and I want to be able to trim this out fairly easy. So once again, just using a tape runner, you could use a liquid glue or whatever adhesive you prefer. I'm just adding tape runner to the edges of those clouds and then I can flip this over and trim those off. This is a lot easier to do before it's adhered together. That way I'm not snipping anything off. Now I have these three rectangle strips. So for these, this also has that dotted line on each edge and that's signifying where our flaps are going to be. So I'm taking some double sided tape and I'm adding that to each end of these flaps. Now I'm going to have two inserts inside of my box and one of these is going to go on the front. I'm taking my bone folder and I'm just burnishing that into the cardstock so that that double sided tape is stuck down really well. And then I can go through these rectangle pieces and just fold along that dotted line. Now to assemble our box, I'm going to take one of these strips. This one, I'm going to have the green down towards the bottom and I'm going to peel up the backing of that double sided tape just using my craft pick or just pick it off with your finger. I'm going to flip my panel, my main base piece over and I'm going to line up the one edge right up next to that line on my rectangle piece. Then I can flip that over and that one side is connected. So this is going to be where my sentiment goes and I'm going to have the green on the bottom to signify my grass since we will be able to see that. Now for the inside pieces, there's two different ways you can do this. You can have them kind of stacked like stadium or you can have them just all be the same height going across. You just need to vary the distance between each of them is all you need to do. Now I want to do kind of a stadium seating, which means it's going to uh, kind of go up as it gets towards the back. And we have that leeway because of the slant from the box. So I removed the backing of one side. I placed that down so it's a little bit in from the edge of my box. And I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to go through and remove the backing of that one end. This one I'm going to place in between these two pieces I already placed down. Now, like I said, you can also do this where they're all kind of the same height, but I think it's really nice with the stadium seating type of look because then you can really see all your elements inside of that box card. Now I'm folding all of these flaps over so that the double sided part is facing up on our right hand side. I can remove the backing of that and then I'm going to take the right hand side of that flap, the small edge of the box card, and I'm just going to fold that over on top of that double sided tape that is exposed. Now I prefer to do my box cards this way, but if you wanted, you could decorate it before you get that all adhered. I just personally like to do it this way because I feel like I have more control over my items and things aren't kind of flopping around. And another preference that you can choose is either using your double sided tape or liquid glue to adhere your pieces to the inside of the box. So the wheelbarrow is the biggest piece and that's going to go in the back of the card for me. Then I'm going to come in and finish with my boots. 
the watering can. Once again, just adding adhesive to the very bottom of those. I really don't want adhe adhesive exposed any further than that. Otherwise, my box won't pop open. Now for the sentiment, I added some foam tape behind that and I'm going to place this on the front of the card. Now you can flatten your card, which would make it a little easier to add that sentiment to. Now here I have some of those flowers that I'm gonna to add to the front of the box. And then my grass tufts, I'm going to just kind of fill in some of the areas by my watering can and over by my wheelbarrow. So these are super simple to put together, lots of ways to decorate them. I left off those scallop pieces that go on the side of the box. I just left that so it's plain white, but you could add those in too to maybe kind of signify some green for the grass. Now these also fold up really nice to fit inside of an A2 size envelope, so they are perfect to send off to a friend and great for that friend to place on display. I hope you enjoyed today's card inspiration. Thank you so much for stopping by.